Hey, what's up? This is Scott with Level Up Tuts, and today we're going to be talking about some more of the mix-ins within the Suzy Toolkit. Now, we're just going to go over a few of them to show you what they have to offer. So, to get started, we're going to talk about some of the spacing mix-ins. We have the ability to add paddings to our columns using three mixins: the prefix mixin to add padding before, the suffix uh, mixin to add padding after, and the pad mixin for adding padding to both prefix and suffix. So if we wanted to take one of our columns, let's say this span, which is the aside here, uh, which is actually, let me refresh here. If we wanted to add padding to our little side nav here, we could use the mixin pad, or I'm sorry, add include pad. And inside here, we're just going to give it what type of pattern we want. Now we could say things like 25% uh, and let's save that. Now if we refresh, you can see that that padding has, of course, caused us to go on another level, but it's definitely getting, uh, let's see. But what it is getting is this 25% padding on both the left and the right, which is why it's so giant. If you wanted to give it a pixel dimension, you could of course do that too. So if we wanted to say 10 pixels of padding on both sides, we could do that as well. And now you'll notice that we just have the 10 pixels of padding on the left and the right as you can see here and if we wanted to do the left and right separately we could do it like so we could say 10 pixels comma 20 pixels now when we check it out the right side is going to have 20 pixels and the left side is going to have 10 pixels of padding now of course if you just wanted to have a suffix or prefix uh, you could just say suffix just like that. And now that's only going to add 10 pixels to the right side for padding. Cool, so that is some of our padding mixins. We also have the ability to adjust margins. We can do that with pre, post, pull, or squish. So what post does, what pre, Pre and post are basically the same as suffix and prefix, just with margin instead of padding. And pull is actually going to be applying for negative margins. So it's going to be pulling it uh, in the against the direction of the flow, wherein the other margins are going to be going with the direction of the flow of your document. So for instance, if we wanted this aside to be pulled by 100 pixels, we could say include pull 100 pixels save this now let's check it out you can see it's being moved over by a negative margin cool so that's just some of our our mixins there we also have a squish mixin which is the shortcut for adding pre and post similar to the pad mixin that we had just used for padding and that's it for our margin mixins. Now the margin mixins are pretty much just what you'd expect. Now we also have a bleed mixin which allows you to apply negative margins with equal positive padding. So basically, so the element borders and backgrounds bleed outside of their containers. For instance, if we had a bleed of 10 pixels what it's going to do is it's going to add a margin of negative 10 pixels and it's going to add a padding of positive 10 pixels so let's try that out and come back here and we can just say bleed and now it's going to ask for the bleed value we can just give this 20 pixels I can save this refresh now let's check out our side what we have here, as you can see, is a margin of negative 10 or 20 pixels and a padding of 20 pixels. It's become apparent if we give this a background of, let's say, ugly blue, you can see that it, uh, where the boundaries are a little bit more definitively. Now, if you just wanted to bleed the horizontal or the vertical amount, you could say bleed hyphen X for the horizontal or bleed hyphen Y for the vertical. 
Now we also have a mixin. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this bleed one. And there's also a gallery mixin where we can pass it some arguments here and it's going to output uh, our items into a grid like gallery. So let's go ahead and quickly, very quickly produce a gallery. We can just say gallery and then inside of this, I'm going to have, um, let's just say four, four image tags like that. And I'm gonna use some place kittens here. So we have some kittens now. So let's save that and check it out. If I refresh, here are our, our kittens. Uh, they are lovely here, chilling, hanging out in this. Uh, you can see they're not doing too much. So let's say we wanted these in a gallery where we're gonna have two images on each row. Now let's come to our CSS. And since we have uh, in our base grid, we have a 12 column grid here. We're going to say that these gallery images take up a certain amount of columns per the grid like normal, but we're gonna be doing it using the gallery mix in instead. So we can type in gallery uh, because that's our class. And then we're gonna say every single image within gallery, we're gonna use this include mixin. Uh, it's going to be the gallery mixin just like this. And now we can say, uh, because we have, we wanna do two images on each row, we're going to say that it's going to be six of 12, right? Because we have a 12 column grid, we have two on each row, therefore each image is going to take up six of 12. Finish this off with a semicolon and let's check out our gallery. When I refresh, so you can now see that we have a two column, two row gallery that's going to responsively adjust and remain two columns. Now this is pretty sweet and let's check out how we can make it a little bit cooler with the use of our breakpoint mixin. If we wanna give it a breakpoint and say at um, the large breakpoint, we want this now to have a new gallery dimensions, right? We want this to say we want it to be now three of 12. So what three of 12 is going to do is it's going to put uh, uh, four images on one row because four times three is 12. So let's come over to our page here. Obviously we refresh and we still have our two columns for mobile, but once we get bigger, you can see once it hits this large breakpoint. So just like that, we have a perfect responsive gallery that we can adjust at any breakpoint and we hardly even had to tell anything. It, Susie is doing all of the complex math for you and it is just excellent. So check out the rest of the toolkit. There's not a ton left but there are some ones I didn't go over. So just check out the docs. They're nice and easy to understand. So go to the the toolkit section of the Susie documentation and see what other mixins they have to offer. So as always this is Scott with Level Up Tuts. If you have any questions or comments please leave a comment in the video. Hit us up at Facebook, Twitter, uh, pretty much anywhere we love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.